It's the place many of us spend the greatest proportion of our lives. I mean, I spend longer at my desk than I do in my bed. And so over the last couple of months, I've been trying to make some simple changes to my workspace to mean that the space is just that satisfying to be in that I actually strangely look forward to sitting down in front of my computer and getting to work. But how can you make your desk a more productive and enjoyable place to be without spending the kind of money that only Ali Abdal can afford on height adjustable desks, iPads, 52 inch widescreens and Apple everything. I don't think you need to spend much money at all to create a space you're proud of and which can then help you to produce work of which you're similarly proud. So I have just finished my law exams which is woo -woo, very exciting and what you see here is my desk set up from those exams. They basically wanted to make sure we didn't have too much stuff on our desk so that we can cheat. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I basically go from this desk setup, which has almost nothing on it, to my ordinary desk setup so that you can hopefully find out how you can make your desk more productive and more beautiful so it's a space you really enjoy being in. But first, there is one crucial matter of business to be taken care of, and that is that this exam beard got to go. Razor's run out of charge, not ideal. <sighs> Et voila! And in case you're interested in buying any of the stuff that I mentioned in this video, it'll all be linked in the description below. So let's dive in. First to go back is my touch sensitive lamp. Now I love the fact that you can adjust the brightness of these and I also think they give a lovely warm glow when you're burning that midnight oil, which I very rarely do, but hey. My book stand is probably the desktop I get most questions about, and this bad boy served me brilliantly throughout my time at Cambridge and studying law ever since. It's not amazing for absolutely huge books, like 700 pages, but anything under around 400 or 500 pages, it's amazing. It looks beautiful, it provides a splash of colour on my desk, and is compact enough to fold into a rucksack to take to the library. Now, I wouldn't recommend you go out and buy bookends like these, they're cricket balls, FYI, and cricket, for you Americans, is a sport. I was given these as an 18th birthday present from two of my best mates, so they carry some sentimental value. I have one small A6 size notebook, which, to be honest, is just pretty and has my name on it, uh, a bigger A5 notebook that I use all the time, and I use this pretty much for everything from making notes in classes to jotting down shots that I want to get in my next video a copy of my own book, shameless self-promotion in the background of my YouTube videos, hopefully. Go check out my book now if you haven't already, by the way, there is a discount available for you on screen now, and the ebook is beautiful and so, so helpful. And then two other books that it's easy to dip in and out of. Altogether, I think books are an amazing way to add a splash of colour and sophistication if you feel your desk is a little sparse. Let me introduce you to the other woman in my life, and by that I of course mean my beautiful 2017 MacBook Pro with 256GB of storage and 8GB of memory. Now I bought this second hand from eBay as I did with my previous Mac, and on both occasions I've been extremely careful to find a computer that is in amazing condition. This takes time, but I got this for £650, roughly half its retail value. Value. So for me, the risk of buying secondhand is worth it. Regardless, I love this machine. That said, my girlfriend Beth just bought the brand new 2020 version after months and months of saving, and I think my head may have been turned. My 27 inch Samsung curved monitor is next go back. For around £150, quadrupling the amount of screen space I have on my laptop is an absolute lifesaver. I got this as a birthday and Christmas present a year and a half or so ago, and always say I wish I'd got this years ago. I can get five or six different windows open during a class if necessary, which is honestly so so useful when working from home at the moment. My Mac then sits neatly on top of my drawers under my desk, leaving the monitor on show. Alternatively, you can go for the dual screen approach, but I personally found that the different sizes of my Mac and monitor didn't really add that much to my setup. I ended up just using the monitor all the time anyway, but that's up to you. If you're going to invest in an external monitor and a Mac user, you also need one of these little dongle adapter thingies. I personally use the Odemy dongle. It's around 25 pounds and looks good, although dongles in general are just a bit of a pain. You then also just need an HDMI cable to plug in between your Mac and the screen. This is my wireless keyboard and mouse combo, and I've got to say that at the time I got my monitor, I felt I couldn't justify the insane amount it costs for an Apple mouse or trackpad and keyboard. An attitude <laughs> I've got to say persists today. I mean, £200 for a keyboard and a mouse. Are they having a laugh? 
Anyway, <laughs> sadly, my Cinder keyboard is no longer available in exactly the same style that I have, but they do now have another version that I'll link to in the description. My BenQ screen bar is a fairly new addition, and this really is amazing. It subtly and beautifully sits on top of your monitor, so you really need a monitor to have one of these. And this is a bit extravagant at £90 for a light, but whereas with a conventional desk lamp all of the light is focused in one area, this evenly lights the whole of your desk, so you kind of forget it's even on. It has a sensor so it will auto adjust to brightness if you want it to, or you can manually adjust both warmth from daytime white to a more moody warm hue and brightness. It's desk lighting decadence, but it is really cool. At the quite considerably less sexy end of desk paraphernalia, a USB charging dock is a great investment. £20 and rather than using the single charging plug that you get with your phone, you can have multiple leads off one plug to charge your headphones, wireless keyboard and mouse and phone. This again just tucks under my desk. The other thing you'll find if you get an external monitor is that you can't now rely on the speakers on your laptop because it's closed under your desk. Most monitors don't come with built-in speakers, so I bought this very cheap soundbar for the very rare occasions that I want to listen to audio on my laptop aloud, like when I do a workout in my bedroom for example. I generally listen to stuff through my Sonos speaker when I'm listening to music or Bose headphones, so I didn't want to spend more than £25. And these on the other hand are expensive, but my Bose QuietComfort 35 noise cancelling headphones are probably my favourite piece of tech. I got them as a birthday present from more or less everyone I know a year ago because they are that expensive and they're one of those things you don't really realise you need until you have them. These are the second series ones and they are extremely comfortable, amazingly well made and frankly a must have if like me you are other people intolerant. I personally suck at concentrating when there is any kind of background noise from people speaking to songs playing in cafes, however I've been using these without music for their noise cancelling capabilities while studying in my room at home to block out the sound of other people in the house. And when I'm getting to work at my desk I often put these on with my Apple Music reading playlist which I'll link in the description and this signals to my inner chimp that it's time to get into my state of work flow. Plus, as an added bonus, the sound quality is rather nice. Next up, we have a new addition to the party, my extra wireless phone charger. I'd been wanting to get a wireless charger for my iPhone for ages to have on my desk, so I can avoid the hassle and clutter of charging cables. So I got myself a £50 wireless charger, which doubles up as a powerful portable power bank. Exter have offered to give my viewers a 15% discount code, Liam-15, or you can check out their website through the link at the top of the description as they quite often have good discounts available. For a more retro edition, I bought this Casio MS8B calculator for my recent exams, and I've got to say there's something just incredibly satisfying about button bashing on this old school calculator. It can't do much, but for the basic financial calculations I need to do, it's perfect. Much better than the calculator on my iPhone, in my opinion. I prefer the Stablo pastel highlighters rather than the fluorescent ones you can get, as I just find them easier to look at on the page. A decent set of highlighters are not only a must-have as a student, Liam, don't be ridiculous purple next to red no 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 that's better they do also just make your desk look that much more colorful in terms of how i use these i highlight revision notes using a color-coded system that makes use of pretty much all of these highlighters poster notes are generally very handy that's about all i have to say on those Ooh, and more excitingly, for way biros, the pen of choice of every sane student who likes a little colour in their notes, but doesn't have time to be removing lids on the regular. Get the big ones though, rather than some dodgy knockoff. The mechanism of these is amazing, and they're around one to two pounds a pen, so go on, treat yourself. My Filofax is next, and like pretty much everything that's remotely nice that I own, I got mine again as a 21st birthday present from my parents with my initials embossed on the front. They're around £100 I think. It's lovely and I really like having a weekly spread open on my desk at all times. Any of you who've seen my study with me videos will know that I make my daily to-do lists in this and it's become an essential item in my organisation system. The third woman in my life, Jennifer. A super duper bonus wave of good luck will of course flow your way if you can guess in the comments why she's called Jennifer. She's a new addition and as I've not wanted to leave the house during lockdown, I ordered her and her pot from Amazon. She's a coffee arabica, if that's how you say it. 
I generally keep a pad of plain lined paper either out on my desk or in a drawer, and if I'm not wearing it, I keep my beaut Daniel Wellington watch in the corner of my desk too. And last but not least, I generally also keep my extra wallet on my desk. Get ready to steal my card details, ready, ready, ready. Ooh, that's a book token. This again is relatively new addition as my old wallet was a little tired and I felt was a bit too chunky to carry around in a suit pocket when I start work. Now this extra wallet is actually amazing. It's around the same price as similar quality wallets at £79 or £99 for the slightly higher quality leather but your cards pop out in this awesome, easy to use way that gets around the faff of trying to pull cards out of your wallet with one hand while there's a queue behind you in Sainsbury's. It has a metal lining that prevents your card details being stolen by being swiped and a few pockets for cash and other cards. It's become my new wallet and I love it. Extra have again offered to give my viewers a 15% discount code, so do check out their website through the link in the description. So yeah, that's more or less my current desk setup. But before you go, I want to leave you with one final thought that sums up my attitude towards how I set up my work environment because this isn't just an exercise in looking pretty. When Michael Jordan played basketball, he'd meticulously lace and tie his Air Jordans in the same way before every game. Michael Jordan wasn't the most dominant basketball player ever because of his shoes, but getting that ritual right set the tone for how he wanted to perform out on the court, to the best of his ability. And it's the same for your desk. It sets the tone for the work you produce, and having a space that you find beautiful radically alters the headspace from, for example, when you're working on an unmade but covered bed. If you've enjoyed this, check out my other video on the four techniques I'm currently using to make the most of the difficult times in which we currently find ourselves.